then we'll go ahead and get started with Senator Emery. Okay, here we go again. Uh, Wanda and I are very glad to be with you today. Always enjoy being with senior citizens. I've visited all three of your sites from time to time. I have a 16-year record in the General Assembly supporting general supporting uh, senior citizen issues and funding. Uh, sometimes uh, my side doesn't win, but uh, I'm always pushing for more funding and, and support of senior citizens. Going back to my days as judge executive and, and mayor, uh, I have a 48-year uh, record of supporting senior citizens and uh, putting them in the uh, county budget and so forth. We have a strong Ohio County background. Wanda and I have owned property in Ohio County for 58 years. All three of our children live in Ohio County, Olayton, Beaver Dam, and Centertown. Both of our grandsons uh, live in Ohio County, Beaver Dam, and Hartford. Uh, I look forward to, to working for you again for another four years. I appreciate uh, so much your support in the uh, previous election. I answer only to my constituents. I do not answer to uh, Frankfurt politicians, no matter who they are. In the last session, I supported our teachers. I am a former teacher teaching at Pleasant Ridge, Cromwell, and Horse Branch. My wife is a former teacher having taught at Pleasant Ridge. It's certainly our pleasure to be with you. I uh, sincerely and humbly ask for your vote and support this November. May the good Lord go with each and every one of you. Democratic candidate for State Senate, District 6. Oh. That includes Muhlenberg, Butler, Hopkins, and Ohio County. I'm a teacher. I teach middle school special education in Muhlenberg County. I'm a KEA member, and I'm a member of a proud union household. I'm a working class citizen who knows the hardships of living paycheck to paycheck. I believe that the public education system is the greatest vehicle for societal change ever created. We must have a proactive advocate to protect every aspect of it. Public education can offer those born into an impoverished situation the opportunity to rise above their beginnings. The system has been responsible for creating everything from day laborers to presidents. The time is now to create opportunities for our youth by investing in public schools rather than diverting money to charter schools and minimizing funding in the budget for the great schools that we already have in place. <clears throat> we must work together to expand the opportunity to those students from a reduced socioeconomic status to rise into the working class and become productive members of society. Now is not the time to play special interest and endanger the most vulnerable of our youth. I believe that everyone should be presented the opportunity to attend college, if that is their goal. However, we must also address the goals and needs of those who do not wish to pursue a college degree. The projected shortfall of skilled tradescraft <coughs> workers is a national need that can be met by preparing students for those career pathways. The time is now to create more opportunities for training our young people who are not college bound. The development and implementation of construction pathways is one venue to better prepare our students to develop a skill set that, that, that will make them more appealing to possible employers. This will have the added benefit of creating a highly skilled workforce in order to draw businesses to our more rural areas. I believe that our state workers have dedicated their lives 
to public service and deserve the benefits that, have, that they've paid out of their own pocket and have been promised. The time is now to seek new revenue to fund teacher and state workers' pensions, sustain our public schools, higher education, and workforce development, health care, public and health, uh, mental health, and other priorities that our state is facing, rather than making draconian cuts. We can restore the ability of revenue to keep up with the growth of our state's economy by cleaning up tax breaks, particularly those tax breaks, tax breaks that disproportionately benefit the wealthy and special interest groups. I believe that the labor movement is vital to the welfare of every worker. We must pursue legislation that strengthens organized labor rather than weakening it. The time is now to repeal the anti-union rhetoric of the so-called right to work law that was rushed through the General Assembly last session in 2017. There was a concentrated effort to weaken workers' rights to collectively bargain for better wages and benefits and to, just, to destroy hard-fought hard fought for working conditions and the real, with the real purpose of tilting the balance toward big corporations and rigging the system at the expense of working families. We are in a fist fight for our very way of life and for our future. My husband and I stood alongside with our union sisters and brothers in the Capitol Rotunda as these rights were stripped away. We shouted in unison as one voice until the session ended. We, have may, we may have lost that battle, but we can still win the war. We have an opportunity to stop the aggression and even reverse the malicious legislation that's already been forced upon us in this next election cycle in November. When elected, I will propose, advocate for, and support bills intended to strengthen workers, the workers' position. I will sponsor legislation. <clears throat> I will sponsor legislation directed at improving and protecting benefits, such as workers' compensation and unemployment insurance, because I know firsthand the ebb and flow of the construction trades. And those downtimes can be financially <laughs> devastating to families. I will stand up in the Kentucky State Senate for you. I will be a proactive voice for everyone that has been marginalized and pushed to the side. Together, we can begin to improve the scholastic experience for our youth, seek out new sources of revenue, regrow the working class, and revitalize the efforts to strengthen the labor movement. My name is Crystal Chapel, and I ask for your support for Kentucky State Senate. Thank you. I feel a little bit out of place with all these fine-looking gentlemen over here. My name is Elizabeth Belcher, and I appreciate Brenda for the invitation. I always relish the opportunity to uh, introduce myself to the Bell Powell County residents. Um, some background. I was uh, born in Kentucky. I'm a mother, wife, grandmother. I'm a Christian and I'm pro-life. I was raised uh, on a dairy farm in West Davis County and I was one of seven children and if you are familiar with farm life you know that on small farms you all work and so hard work is in my DNA and my parents were always very good about stressing to us education and they instilled in us the fact that no matter what we wanted to do in life we could do it as long as we were the best at what we did. I uh, chose to be a nurse. I uh, became a certified occupational health safety and environmental nurse specialist and I work for the city of Owensboro and I'm a retired public employee. And that is kind of why I decided to go ahead and declare my candidacy for state representative is because the last two years we have seen a relentless attack on our working people. I've been endorsed by the, uh, the unions, the AFL, CIO, United Auto Workers, and United Mine Workers. 
And these attacks have been the right to work for less laws that have been passed, which has lowered our wages for our working people. The repeal of the, re of the prevailing wage on government jobs has been eliminated, and that again lowers our wages. The attack on our working people through lowering our workers' comp benefits, including our black lung benefits, which I am fighting for our minors for. And also our teachers and our public retirees and their pensions. We worked hard for those pensions. We sacrificed years. And now they are attacking us and our pensions. And it's not our fault. We paid our part. The state did not. And so I feel like that everything that has been passed has been, they're balancing the budget on the backs of the working people and also on our seniors because they are attacking benefits for seniors, the um, meals on wheels for seniors, home health care and our health benefits. Um, I can identify with that. My, my dad was a veteran of World War II and he had a disability related to his service and uh, the VA without them we could not have cared for him at home because of the VA benefits that were provided to him and my mother is still living and she's 87 years old and she works three days a week so I'm going to be like her when I grow up um, but I just ask that you all uh, keep me in mind when you go to vote in November because I am working for you. I answer to no one except the, my constituents. The people that are working against us are working for the rich and big corporations. While they're putting taxes on us, they are giving tax breaks to them. And I feel like the role of government is to improve the lives of citizens in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, and uh, pleasure to be here, as always. It's always good to go first, because Elizabeth touched on a lot of things. Now Jordan and I are not know what we're going to talk about, but uh, she did touch on some important issues that are facing our state. A little bit of background about myself. You all, know, most of you all know me, but uh, just in case you don't, came here in 1985 as a teacher and a coach, and uh, been here ever since. I've been a school superintendent for the last 12 years, six years here and six years previously in Hancock County. I was a state trooper for a while during that time. It was a great profession, uh, but I can tell you later, they were very underpaid at that time. Some of the issues that uh, Elizabeth touched about, you all read about all the education issues, and uh, they're still there, and they will still be there in the next session, so that's, that's gonna take up a lot of the session next time, no matter who you elect, but I feel like with my background in education and working with budgets, uh, we have a $50 million budget here in Ohio County, 650 employees, and uh, I'm basically over all the areas there, whether it be construction or management of employees or funds. I'm pro-life, proud to say that, I always say that. Uh, my daughter has adopted uh, my grandson, which wouldn't be here if it wasn't probably for that issue, and very fortunate for that. I'm pro-coal also, and I, coal is a big asset here in Hawaii County. It's not been talked about a whole lot, but I met with a uh, gentleman from Murray Energy a little bit ago, we come to the high school and they bought out Armstrong. But there's a whole lot more coal here than I ever imagined, and probably you all also. And there's enough coal here to provide jobs for years and years and years to come if we can you know, train our employees for that. And, and we were working with him, I pitched an idea to him, maybe we could do some of the initial training at the high school and then when, when our students get turn 18 or ready to go out in the workforce, they would have that training already. So that's some of the things that, that we're trying to do here in uh, creating jobs and, and getting employees, uh, students ready to enter the, the workforce. Uh, you know, taxes, our tax code is 50 years old or better, and we bring in two billion uh, 
less dollars than we give in deductions in the state. So, you know, that's a red flag, and I think CB can tell you that, you know, there needs to be some work. Both parties agree that there needs to be tax modernization, but it never gets done. So, you know, we, we have a $2 billion, $2 billion gap there that would, you know, that would help in a lot of areas, whether it be teachers, pensions, uh, senior services, two, our two most underserved population are senior citizens and veterans. And I never have understood that. And I would fight, just like CB said, if there's ever any legislation that would harm seniors or veterans, that would, you know, I would not, I would not go along with that and fight, fight to the end. That's two groups right there. No matter what else we do, we need to make sure that, that people that have already given so much have something in return. So I appreciate your vote. I promise you I'm a hard worker. I've always been involved in a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, whatever is good for the people of Ohio County and East Davis County, that's how I'd vote. It's not about the parties. That's the problems we have now. We want to say, well, it's Republican. We're going to vote for it. It's Democrat. And then they never can agree. So it should be about the issues, the issues facing the country, the issues that are facing the state. And we should do right by the people that we represent, and we won't have any issues. That would be my promise. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm Jordan Lanham, and I'm running for state representative in the 14th district. Uh, tell you a little bit about myself and how I came to be here. So, I'm um, I was born and raised on a family farm. Uh, you know, raising raising cattle, tobacco. Uh, you know, grew up in you know in our church, heavily involved in our parish. Uh, today I'm a member of our Knights of Columbus. Uh, I'm 100% pro-life. I've been to Washington, D.C. three times uh, for the March for Life uh, that we hold in, uh, in January. Uh, so I um, went, out, went to college and come back home, went to work in our family coal business. Uh, I'm Western Kentucky Minerals. I've been there. Um, I'm married, got three children. People ask me, they say, why in the world do you want to get involved in politics, you know, especially given the, uh, the adversity, the different things that we have going on today. So, you know, it's, a, you know, it's, it's been a enjoyable, it's been very eye-opening, many of these people up here to share with you. We have so many things going on. And, you know, as many of them have said here today and many of them, you know, to come, a lot of the things we have going on today, we, we've got to realize that and quit attacking each other uh, for, you know, for the ideas. It's, it's several people that I've run into, we all have a common, you know, a common goal to achieve, and that's to shove, you know, that's to shove our economy forward, that's to uh, generate more revenue for our state, that is to, you know, to improve, you know, quality of life, uh, you know, through, through defending life, you know, before, you know, before they're born, all the way through to, you know, to our senior services, uh, just really, truly improving the quality of life. But everybody agrees on that, and we have to come to the table and realize and, and come to an agreement on how we plan to get there. Uh, you know, I've, through my background, through what, I've, uh, through what I've done, I feel that I have, uh, you know, the ability to bring people together. That's what I've spent my career doing. Uh, you know, in, in the coal industry, we, you know, we've got 28 employees today. Uh, you know, I've had to, you know, grew up working, you know, working, um, you know, with my brothers and sisters, uh, you know, my mom and dad coming together, making decisions. Uh, that we have. We work with nine different government agencies uh, that regulate our, I, I've counted them up before, I believe it's nine, if not a few more, depending on how you count them, that, uh, that regulate our industry, that regulate our business. And, you know, through, through working with them, uh, you know, through seeing, you know, the, the ways the government operates, I think I have a lot to bring to the table uh, that could improve, you know, the way our government functions. Uh, to improve the way we spend our money, to improve the way we invest our dollars in our government. You know, coming from the private sector world, uh, you know, I've spent a career creating jobs, uh, trying to, you know, create more jobs for people so that we can raise families. Uh, you know, we, we were able to create good opportunities. It's like Scott hit on a minute ago. We've got a lot of coal in left in our county, uh, in our counties right here. And I think it's important that we, that we realize who we are right here in our communities and what we want to achieve. I think it's important that we, you know, that we, that we come together and realize that, uh, you know, and then from there, I think that we can truly be leaders in the state of Kentucky uh, with our youth. We've got a great educational system here. Uh, we've got some great schools. 
uh, you know, we've got to um, we've got to introduce the, our youth into the workforce uh, and, and get them started. You know, get them started working instead of send, you know instead of putting them further in the hole. You know, we've got a lot of youth that's still living with their parents today. We've got a lot of grandparents today raising children. Uh, you know, because our broken family systems. I think it's important that we, you know, that we address those issues because, you know, we've taken God out of our schools, we've taken God out of our government, we've taken God out of politics, uh, you know, and that's just something that just, you know, that breaks my heart uh, to see that happen just time after time. I think we all, uh, we're all so busy in life, life has us so drowned out that we, you know, as the, as the majority of the people don't agree with, you know, with what has been done in the course of the last several years, uh, you know, but We've all been so busy working, trying to provide for our families that the cost of living keeps coming up, the cost of groceries, the cost of electricity, and our, you know, and our water just to, our, you know, as, as we live, many of us live on fixed, in, you know, incomes. And so I think it's important that we address those issues. We come back together and truly, um, truly realize where we do want to go, get our youth started, you know, as I stated, uh, generate more funding, better paying jobs. Uh, you know, realize that you know all the natural resources that we do have right here locally that we can be taken advantage of. Uh, revamp our local communities. We've got so many of them, you know, across Ohio County and East Davis County. We've got so many small communities that are really proud of where we come from. Uh, you know, I think it's important. We've got a lot of good things going on. We've got a lot of grants you know, coming in to you know to rebuild some of our communities. But anyway, I think it's uh, I think it's important that we you know just come together. Uh, realize that, uh, that you know that where we want to go, uh, that we have all the pieces to the puzzle uh, to put it all together and truly make a difference to, uh, for for our kids and, and sooner you know sooner rather than later. Uh, that's what you know my wife did that even asked me before I got involved in politics. She said, "Are you sure you know you don't want to wait uh, wait a few years?" I said, "You know I was always taught to you know in the world of business is you know when you see an issue when you see a problem address it." Uh, that's, that's where I'm at right here, you know, I see, uh, okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> I see a lot of issues that we have, I think I have the um, ability to address them, and I appreciate your all support, uh, moving forward. We're saying five minutes, that's all I get. Um, thank you, thank you for having me today, thank you for inviting me, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me tell you a little something about myself, uh, my name is Greg Decker, I'm a Republican candidate for Judge Executive. I was uh, raised in Rockport, Rockport, Kentucky. Uh, went to school at Western Elementary, it was Western Elementary Tiger, and from there, uh, junior high at uh, Centertown, Centertown Demon, and then Ohio County High School, graduated Ohio County High in 1982. Uh, my parents are W.L. and Rita Decker. I have a son whose name's Dylan, and my wife's name's Vicki, and I am uh, you know, have a good family, strong family. Um, once I graduated from high school, then I went off to Western Kentucky University, uh, majored in history, minor in government, I graduated uh, from Western, then I come back to Ohio County High School and started teaching. Uh, throughout my career, I, I've done a little bit of everything at Ohio County High. I was a teacher, in-school suspension teacher, track coach, uh, assistant football coach, head boys basketball coach, assistant basketball coach, assistant principal for 12 years, and principal for five years. Uh, you know, somewhere in between all that, I did go back to Western and get uh, two more degrees. I uh, got a, uh, a master's uh, in education. I also got a, a rank one in uh, educational uh, leadership. Throughout my time there at uh, Ohio County High, uh, you know, you, when you're a principal, you deal with a lot of issues. A lot of issues that's very similar to what the judge has to deal with. You know, we deal with budgets, personnel, hiring, firing personnel. Uh, uh, you make very important uh, decisions, always managing a budget. You know, it's about communicating, communicating with the uh, with the public. It's about representing our county well. You know, being a good speaker and, and doing things you need to do, and representing us well in Frankfort. I think I bring all that to the table. I, I think I'd be very good as that as your judge. You know, I spent 30 years. I'm getting ready to retire. I'm getting ready to retire in 42, 42 more work days, Mr. Lewis. I'll be retiring from public education. I spent. Uh, you know, my entire career working for kids. And now I'd like to have the opportunity to work for our county. I think uh, I have the vision uh, take to uh, take us in the right direction. You know, one thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see some uh, economic growth. You know, we're losing our kiddos. Our kiddos are leaving us. They're going other places for jobs. We got to have economic development in our county. 
Who's going to take care of us when we continue to grow old? If they all leave us, correct? We got to have our kids sticking around. All I know everybody in this room today. You want your kids, your grandkids, to have more success than you've had. I do. I know that. I want my son to have better opportunities than I have. You know, and as judge, I'm going to push hard for economic growth and development. I want us to be a, a, a workforce ready community. That's very important to me. Uh, that's one of the issues that I'll focus on. You know, if you know me, you know I, I love our youth. I love our kids. I'm going to be a strong advocate for them. But also, we can't forget about our senior citizens. You know, I, uh, five years ago, I got that uh, AARP card in the mail. And I get that newsletter every morning. And I do read that. And, and I noticed one of the areas that they tend to cut first is seniors. You know, I'm always getting a warning about we're going to cut this from seniors, we're going to take that from seniors. Listen, we have some good programs in our county for seniors, and we're going to keep those programs. We're actually going to look to develop more programs and to grow on the programs we have. You know, we depend on people, younger people, to take care of us as we get older. And we can't have those people leaving us. We've got to have them staying in our community. It's very important. And, you know, there's other things that I'll focus on. I, I see our sheriff here. Uh, you know, safety, that's very important to me. We got to have a safe community. You know, there's, there's no, it's just you can't put enough emphasis on how important it is to have a good safety program. And it's not just the sheriff, we're talking about our, our fire departments, a big part of our community. We got to continue to fund those different programs. But I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, we got we to gotta continue to look at maybe some type of economic development. We got we got to grow. Ohio County has to be going in the right direction for growth. And I'll be sticking around afterwards. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to talk to you. If you have any questions for me, don't, don't hesitate to stop by and ask. And once again, I, I do appreciate you having me out here. And if I can help you down the road, uh, please, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm on Facebook. If you want to send me a friend request, we'll be friends on Facebook. If you have any questions there, that's fine too. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Steve Geary, running for Wyoming County Judge. I'm going to start out by, I'll give you all a letter today, but I still think I need to recognize this. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I'm running for judge. I didn't actually choose it. The Lord chose it for me, and I'm going to do my best to run this county how the Lord would have it done. Now that being said, tells about all my family on all them letters. I'm not going to take time up in that. I think everybody here knows them. Matter of fact, uh, I won't tell who it is because he may not want me to, but I just let a good man go to a good department and he will make him an unreal uh, worker. He done good for me. He's a good, honest boy. It really makes you feel good when you help train some of these high school students and they go out for other jobs. And I've been training the students for years. Ever since I've been in that body shop, I work part-time high school students. And I've done, had one to come up, become a detective. I've had them come, become nurses, work at the steel mills. They work at the mines. I've sent them every direction. Not me doing it, but they learned from me and then I try to encourage them Whatever they like to do, don't let anybody talk you out of it. Continue to go in that direction. And as far as you seniors, I'm right there with you. We need to do all we can for you. I just lost my mom about six months ago, and I tried everything I could to keep her however she wanted, whatever she wanted to do. And uh, I think I can increase some of that. I think we can reach out to some of the business people and different things. I don't want to promise you nothing, but I'm going to work towards being able to help y'all fund trips, whatever you need to do. And I think everybody already knows that I've been working a while with our government, even in Frankfurt and even on hire, and you go to federal. And uh, I've worked with them on a lot of things, got a lot of things accomplished by staying in the background. And I feel like the only way I can really help now is get up and be the judge that will help pull in more. I think everybody here probably knows I help with the coal mines a whole lot. I mean, I've worked hard with them, uh, try to get things done, permits. There's a lot of things you got to do that our government was stopping. Just one letter, one word. 
and uh, as far as uh, being capable of doing this, running the county as a business, I feel like I'm qualified because I have run that business for, body shop business for 27 years. And I've also had to work with insurance companies, adjusters, state people, uh, and employees the whole time I've been there. Every person has got a different personality and you have to learn how to work with that personality. And every one of them has got something new to bring to the table and you have to learn how to listen to them and if you think if their ideals want to work, you can try it. And uh, by running that business, I think I'm pretty conservative. I don't waste money. Uh, I think I can help tighten up this county and put the money in different directions. Not saying anybody's doing a bad job, but I've got different ideals and different ways of doing things, and I think I can make you a good judge, but I'm going to need your vote, and you got to make sure you get out there during the primary. That's the main thing. And I'll be here if y'all want to talk to me afterwards. I don't want to bore you and keep you too long because a lot of people got to talk. But I appreciate every, every one of you. I'm getting out in the county, seeing a lot of people. Some people, it's going to sound awful, but I know what kind of car you drive before I know your name. <laughs> but I can't help that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I've always tried to please the people. Like if somebody wants their car psychedelic, I'm going to paint that thing. So. I think I got a good record of getting along with each individual person. And I want to mention one more thing. I, I want to work the hardest with our masters. They are elected officials, and we need to respect them and get along with them. Just like Tracy's office, Bess's, every office out here, Jason's, we need to work with them. We want to make this county shine to these other counties. And I got friends in Muhlenberg County, Davis. I got friends in every county that touches this county, and maybe even further. They come, they bring their vehicles to me that far away to work on. So I know I've got a lot of good friends that will help me in different directions. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Brendan. Thank all of you for your time and attention. Uh, I've already been here for uh, eight years, and uh, I've proven to you that I can serve Ohio County well. And I'll touch on a few of the things that uh, we have accomplished. But I'll even go back farther than that. Uh, I'll go back to, I served as the park director for 26 years prior to becoming judge executive. And during that time, I secured the money for this very building and also helped with much of the building of it with all the excavation, the electrical into it, the water, the septic systems, which was very elaborate. Did all that for this building. So uh, I feel uh, very good about it and it's been very successful. And since I've been in office, I have uh, this office, I've helped secure the St. Francis Center in Horse Branch, which gives us a, a another very good uh, senior center on that end. And, uh, and we've helped keep the one in Fordsville, which was already going when I came. Very proud of that. Um, and also on senior center, senior services, these meals, homebound meals is very important. And we was able to, since I've been here, we've purchased five automobiles, good ones, that uh, is in there for delivering the meals. And there were none for that before I came. Uh, proud of that. Um, and that's what we're, and we continue to do that for senior services. I touched on that first because that's who we're talking to today. I'm gonna back up to the beginning and tell you uh, who I am. Of course, you know my name. Uh, I've been in Ohio County all my life, with the exception of two years I left to serve in Uncle Sam's uh, Army. Uh, and not only that have I lived here, my family on both sides have been here since the Revolutionary War in Ohio County. Um, our family tree doesn't go anywhere else, it stays right here. I'm kind of proud of that. I was married for 45 years and uh, two months to Barbara Jones, and uh, she uh, passed away. Uh, July of uh, 2016. Uh, that's changed my life uh, a lot, but it's also pushed me even harder into my work to get more done here. So I'm proud of that. Um, we've talked, all talked about economic development, which is, is so important. Our, our community is a bunch of pieces. We're not just one thing. We're everything. We've got to be, we've got to have economic development. We've got to have peace and safety. We've got to have roads and infrastructure. Uh, we've, 
uh, we've got to have services for senior uh, 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 citizens. We've got to have the quality of life. No one wants to move here if we, there's not some quality of life uh, things here. So we concentrate on that. Uh, back up to the peace and safety. Ohio County, uh, not just with me, but I've continued it in my tenure. Uh, pay, uh, we spend more on uh, uh, law enforcement per capita than any other county in the state of Kentucky. Our fire departments and our ambulance service and all those things are really well funded as well. Uh, I'm proud of that. But we're, we're not just one thing, we're everything. Um, and if you will elect me again, I'll assure you they'll continue to uh, serve Ohio County uh, and remember all of the pieces of the county government and not try to let one thing overshadow the big picture. And I think that's what's very important uh, for the county. Uh, and, and I think I've already proven to you I can do it. And I won't take up any more of your time, but please, on May the 22nd, remember the name, David Johnston. Thank you. Thank you all for having us here to hear us all talk. Uh, many of you know, my name is Gary Ripwright. I grew up in Horse Branch. Uh, when I look out through here, I see my grandparents that I always enjoy going to see them. Uh, the next four years is very tough for the jails. If you notice, hardly anybody talked about the jail because that's the last point anybody wants to go to is jails. But we, Bivens tried to cut our bed allotment money this last time, and that would have shut our jail down. And we made many trips to Frankfurt asking him to change his mind, and he did so. He took a little bit of it, but he didn't take the whole pot. If he took the whole pot, the jail would have been shut down for sure. Now, the next four years, who knows what's going to happen. It's, it's just hard keeping the old jail open. We are operating now the oldest jails in Kentucky, built in 1940. We're still opening the doors with hand crank doors, just like St. Quentin. Uh, it's just difficult to run. Every day something's going on with that jail as far as maintenance. <coughs> and I'll just ask you to keep it, because I know I saw some heads bobbing here, keep you all awake. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off. With, I ask you to support me in this next lecture. Thank you. Hello. Can you guys hear me? All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you for the invitation to come today. Uh, my name is Aaron Howard. Um, I'm 39 years old. I'm from Ohio County. I've been here my whole life. Uh, my wife is Sarah Beth Howard. Uh, she's a bogus. She uh, was raised in Louisville, but she's actually uh, been here as my wife for, for a while now. Uh, I have a son that's uh, 21 years old, almost 21 years old. He's a student at Campbellsville University. Uh, I'm just uh, running for Ohio County Jailer. I'm very excited and very passionate about running for Jailer. Uh, the reason why I'm running for Jailer is, uh, the main thing I'm running for Jailer for is I'm not running to take someone's job away from them. I'm running to make a difference in the lives of these inmates, uh, to make a life, uh, difference in the lives of others. We all have hurdles that we must come over in our lives as we go through our lives. And uh, I, I just like, many others that are sitting in this room have had things that I've had to overcome in my life. Um, and in my past, I had things that I had that, you know, that were not proud of, uh, things that I've come from in my past that I had to overcome. And I had people help me along the way. And uh, through education and through rehabilitation and things of that nature, I've been able to become the man that I am today through the blood of Christ, through my relationship in Jesus Christ. He's brought me from things of the past to where I am today. And through doing jail ministry with inmates uh, at Ohio County for almost uh, almost five years, four to five years, uh, working at Ohio County Jail, working at Butler County Jail, I was able to work with inmates. And, and in doing that, I, I really had an opportunity to, to work with the inmates, and I really want to do education and rehabilitation because I believe if we can educate uh, and we can rehabilitate and we can keep inmates from becoming repeat offenders, if we can teach uh, inmates the basic life skills. There's a lot of inmates that don't even know how to pay bills and don't know how to do things of that nature. If we can teach that to inmates, then we can keep them from coming back. A lot of inmates, you know, are just down on their luck and, and, and whatnot, but there are some inmates that all they know is to, to make drugs, to, to sell drugs and stuff of that nature. If we can keep them from doing that, then we can keep them from coming back. You know, rehab centers are a great thing, but if, if you call a rehab center right now and try to get into a rehab center, beds and rehabs are full. Uh, talk to 
Commonwealth attorneys and, and state attorneys and stuff of that nature and, and even working in Butler County Jail, getting people in, in rehab centers are, are hard to do because they're full. But there are programs out there, there are programs that are available, MRT programs, which are rehabs that are, which is a rehabilitation program that's available inside a jail where you can have training and, and you can do the rehab inside the jail while the inmates are inside the jail. If you can keep the drugs and stuff out of the jail, bring dogs in the jail to keep drugs out of the jail. When you find drugs in the jail, charge the inmates and let it go through past pretrial to the judge and let that prosecute to the inmates. Keep the drugs out of the jail, keep the jail safe and rehabilitate the inmates because see, everybody deserves a second chance. We, we deserve to be in humane situations. No matter what you've done, we're all human beings. And I believe that we deserve second chance. We, we deserve to be in humane situations. I ask for your vote. Uh, I'm uncontested in the primary on May 22nd, but on November the 6th, I humbly ask for your vote. I'm Republican candidate Aaron Howard. I'm for education, I'm from rehabilitation, and I, uh, I just ask that you help vote to make a difference in Ohio County. Uh, in the lives of inmates and the lives of others. I would uh, serve you guys, uh, not only the inmates, but serve Ohio County, and I believe that I would serve you well. I thank you very much for your time today. God bless you and God bless us. Thank you, Brenda. I still get that a lot. A lot of people call me sheriff, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm not the sheriff anymore. I used to be, but I appreciate being here today, and uh, I want to say that I uh, I have been in Owyhee County all my life. I live in a little town called McGann's between Dundee and Fordsville. Most of you, I think, know where it's at. I've been, in essence, a public service all my life. I've been in the grocery business for many years. Still am. I operate a store at Pleasant Ridge. I had four at one time. I won at McGann, one in Horse Branch, one in Rosine, and one in Pleasant Ridge. I was a sheriff here for 17 years and two months. I worked under Sheriff Jim Wheeler for approximately eight years as his chief deputy. Prior to that, for Sheriff Martin for three years. Uh, I had a question here tonight that, uh, today about, uh, he thought that the coroner uh, had to have some kind of medical experience or training, but, uh, According to the statute, you know, you must be 24 years of age before the election, be a resident of the state of Kentucky for two years, and be a resident in the district you serve one year prior to the election. With that being said, I will say that I'm not a physician, nor am I a mortician. But when I was a sheriff for many, many years, I dealt with a lot of death, automobile accidents, uh, suicides, homicides, drownings. I dealt with skeletal remains that were found. Many, many things that dealt with uh, situations required extensive investigation, which would be the part of the coroner's job, as well as family notification and such as that. I feel that I am qualified to be your coroner, and if I am elected, I will say to you that I'd be dependable, and I would be devoted to the job. I'd give you 110%. One once told me that, uh, you know, we sent a lot of times, and I'm guilty of it, say, I done this or I done that. And I heard a story one time about a family sitting at the table, mom and daddy and a brother and a sister, and they was eating and the argument broke out between the two children. One said, I done this, and one said, I done that. But the dad spoke up and said, now, I don't want to hear no more of that. He said, you go out into the world and prove yourself. said, I never done nothing, and said, your record will speak for yourself. So I say to you that all the time I was in sheriff, that I feel like that I done a good job and I had a good record. I was always there for you. And when I look out over the crowd and I see all my elders here, as I said on the radio, they asked me a question yesterday, who made the biggest impression besides your family on your life? My answer to that was my elders. When I look at all of you, I see a bank of knowledge. 
And when I need to know something, I always refer to my elders. I listen to you, and I record that in my mind, and I don't forget. And I can go back and have stories from many, many people that I've talked with, my elders, and because they've been there and they've done it. They've been there long before I was, and they'll be here after. So I know that I, I have utmost respect for my elders. <coughs> If y'all can see to help me and vote for me for your corner, I'll assure you I'll do a good job. Thank you very much. How's everyone doing? Good. I'm Joe Barnes running for re-election, uh, third district magistrate. Um, born and raised here in Ohio County. I'm married to Carrie Kessinger, and we've got one daughter named Chloe Barnes. She's in Western School. We grow up, well, I, I live down in Chiggerville. I don't know if anybody knows where that is. It's in the far reaches of the county. It's in the far reaches of my district. But I've uh, been serving as a magistrate for third district, which takes it in Mack Henry, Centertown, Rockport, and Vita area. And I've uh, been trying to uh, kind of just enhance the uh, third district in, in the roads and features, and also serve uh, on the court uh, looking at our bottom line looking at how we can provide all these needs for the county. And I, what I mean by needs is the ones we've got to, the ones everybody requires, uh, safety, fire, uh, senior citizens, and uh, how we can meet all those needs without having to raise taxes. And that's a, a big push I've always uh, said, you know, how can we uh, meet all the requirements? And it's uh, it's been a challenge, but um, I'm willing to do it again. I, I, I think I've done a good job. I've, I've, I've asked for you to look at my record and what I've done. I've got some sheets of papers going around what all I've done in my district. Uh, but I say I've done, but I've done it with the help of my road foreman, uh, my judge, my, other, my fellow magistrates. And uh, you know, when it boils down to it, uh, sometimes it just comes down to the money. Can't do everything you want, but we, we try to do what we got to do. And, one of the biggest accomplishments, you know, while I was in office, I've worked on uh, getting some of these old wooden bridges out of our district that have been kind of forgotten about. The safety issue, people's traveling across the school bus, <coughs> propane trucks, and uh, they didn't even know it. I even um, kind of just gotten fell on the on the wayside, and uh, one of them we did an 80-20 uh, through the bridge program, and we replaced it with a, a big culvert, and then the other ones we, uh, we did some studies on it and uh, used some of my engineering background for the companies I worked for. And we was able to replace those bridges with uh, big arch tiles, which ended up saving the county about $100,000 on those three bridges, Fulkerson Road, Row Lane, and um, uh, it was uh, Schenkel Chapel right next to Tom's Branch. And uh, all those bridges actually even some of the people who lived on those roads didn't realize there was still a wood bridge underneath that pavement so we was able to fix those safety issues and then also partnered with a fellow magistrate and we went to frankfurt and uh, campaigned with tommy thompson and then matt castlin and cb emory on trying to uh, get the rochester uh, ferry ramp approaches regrade it and get them where they wasn't nearly as steep that project got completed and very proud of it we, i did some engineering work down there for them on it and uh very proud of that took out of the there was issues where it was safety and also people was tearing their cars up when they were crossing the ferry and uh that's a that's a project i've been proud that we was able to get done while i was in office but I'd just like for you to look back at uh at my record while i was in there and uh <coughs> You know, see how I did, and if you feel like I've been a good uh, servant for you to reelect me on uh, May the 22nd. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity today to come up and speak to you guys. I appreciate it. My name is Kenneth Calloway, and I'm running for Fourth District Magistrate. I grew up, I'm not sure if McGann has outskirts, but I grew up on the outskirts of McGann and uh, married to. <laughs> to Melanie, uh, and I have four children, Isaac, Simon, Reagan, and Lillianne, and uh, that lived in the county my entire life. And you may say, you know, I'm one of the younger candidates. How do you guys, how does this guy relate to me? Well, apart from having a prosthetic hip, 
which I do have. Uh, I, uh, my current role that I, I, I serve in today is a director of human resources for a company and I'm responsible for about 500 of our retirees and get to deal with them on a daily basis on their coordination of benefits, life quality, making sure they have the proper care and services that they need in order to be able to live the lives that they deserve to live. So I get to deal with them on a regular basis and it, it's, a, it's a privilege for me to be able to do that and, and also, as, uh, as Mr. Doolin stated as well, glean some of that knowledge from them and, and because they have a better understanding and, and you guys grew up in a different time than us and, and that, that knowledge that you transfer to us is very important. Um, some of the initiatives that I that I want to bring to the table. First off, I have a huge passion for workforce development. You know, people want more, and better roads, and, and better services in the county. But unless we we increase revenue, those things are impossible. So I want to bring my my skills at, in human human resources to be able to uh, bring that to this county to help this this county. I have a, a, a passion for my children as well to make sure that they have the things that they need, the jobs they, that they have. If they want to move away, that's perfectly perfectly fine, but I want them to, to want to move away if, if they're going to do that. I don't want them to have to move away. So I want to work with our, our judge executive and our magistrates to, for economic development to bring jobs into the county so that so that we can increase their, their quality of life and so that they can have things better than, than what I've had it, it, as, as I was growing up. So I appreciate your consideration in this election cycle and um, it's very nice to meet you folks. Would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak to, today to uh, the seniors. Um, I want to, I don't want to brag, continue to, I've heard a lot of people brag on their accomplishments, but I want to say one thing about our, the fourth district. Uh, when I first went on the court, which is 28 years ago, we had about 50% of water uh, water lines in, in the county up in the 4th District. And thanks to our courts, our judges, our uh, water districts, we've been able to, to, to put about 99% of the water lines in now. And that, that's an accomplishment I'm very proud of. Not only the roads and bridges and tiles and culverts and the blacktop and the chip and seal that we've been able to do over 28 years. I'm very proud of that and I think that uh, my constituents that live within my district realize of the accomplishments that's been made. But not only by the help of myself, but uh, the judges that have served, uh, fellow court members that I've worked with over time, and especially the water, the water districts and all working together, we were able, been able to do this. And I just want to touch base before I get off about the Senior Center. I was on the court when uh, the conception of the Senior Center came into play. The state came in. Uh, they said they would build it at no cost to the county. Uh, they had, we had to agree that, that after two years we would take over the running of, uh, of the, uh, the center. And we have, and I've worked on 28 budgets since I've been on the court, and we've always been a supporter of the Senior Center. Uh, here out here at, uh, at, at the park. But I want to ask that uh, if uh, you're not committed to anybody in this election, I would appreciate your vote on May 22nd. Thank you very much. Kentucky Secretary of State has a website in which you can look to see if you have unclaimed property. Uh, Charlotte Whitaker and I uh, have, have, uh, have, have got a list there at the office, at the county attorney's office in which you can review that to see if you have any. A lot of that is a lot of times minimal, uh, but we will help you get the forms and send those to the state. That's something Charlotte and I have been working on. One of the other things that we, that we do when we, when we work with senior citizens is guardianships and conservatorships. Uh, some of you may have had family members that you've had to deal with and, and taking care of their business, uh, unfortunately by court order. Maybe they didn't have the opportunity or time to do that by power of attorney. Um, but we assist in that. Uh, that normally, before my time, was done at the clerk's office, and those are forms that you would fill out. Uh, that has changed. We take those on now. Uh, you can come into our office. We'll talk to you about that, and we'll also help you assist you in filling out the forms. Again, I won't be very long, and I thank you um, for all your time. Good to see everyone out here today. Thanks. I'm going to show Justin what it means to be brief. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Brenda and your staff for having us out. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come out and I appreciate what you do for the seniors and the programs in this county. Um, 19 years ago this month, I was appointed to this position and, and I've been very blessed uh, that you've kept me here. I'm humbled and honored. I, I serve you daily. 
Uh, and if ever we are in need of the PVA office, or if, if you have a question, you need a map, uh, feel free to call us. Uh, we'll help you any way we can. Uh, Justin, this is being brief, and it's time to eat, I hope. So thank you. Oh, oh well. <laughs> I think I broke it. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate the opportunity for you guys having me here today. Uh, I just wanted to briefly say I don't have any opposition. I appreciate the opportunity to serve as your sheriff. It's very humbling that, that we had no opposition this time. I hope it's for the fact that we've done a good job and you want to keep us here. Uh, I've tried to put together a great staff, a staff that is very caring and, and a staff that looks after the people of this community. We're not just policemen, we're servants of this community. So we have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, as you know, a lot of scams and, and things that you're faced with daily. Uh, we try to keep you updated on those by coming out and talking to you regularly and posting those on our Facebook and our social media sites. Um, I, I want to say too that I, I work closely in, in the courthouse with the, the county attorney, the PVA, uh, Jason, Bess. We all work together as a group when we have problems. It, it's such a group, to, a good group to work with and, and it's humbling when you, you come to the table and everybody sits down and you're sensible and you can talk about things. Uh, you, you may have heard me fussing a little bit about the uh, budget lately. I'm very passionate about our, our police protection here. I think it's the most important thing in our county, one of the most important things, uh, the safety and security. When you go home and you go to sleep at night that we have a deputy out on the road to, to look after those things and to be uh, out in your communities. I have a 24-hour patrol which I put together that wasn't here before I got here. <coughs> I have that deputy out in a car 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And with, with budget cuts we were facing that have been handed down from the state, it looked like we may lose that and maybe even lose a position. There's, there's things maybe coming down the, the pike that, that maybe will save us on that. But I, if you see all these guys, be sure that you tell them that that law enforcement is very important. I'm, I'm not wanting to get any of these guys in trouble, but uh, I want to look after our police protection and, and make sure that that funding is there for us. So keep that in mind when you talk to these guys. I thank you again for letting me serve as your sheriff. I'm very humbled. Uh, my door is always open. I have an open door policy. If you have questions or comments or the way we're doing something that's not satisfactory, please let me know because we strive every day to make that office better for you. And I thank you again.